Welcome to Pod Save America. I'm John Favreau. I'm John Lovett. I'm Tommy Vitor. On the pod today, we have the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, California Representative Adam Schiff. Also, he represents us. Our well, congressman. He is the representative of Dorrington Ave. That's why I was shouting Hollywood. at him at a town hall. Just, <laughs> so, you know, like one street over, we would have been Ted Lou's constituents, but we uh, were Adam. I checked this out. Honestly, you can't lose. <laughs> it's a lot of detail for a uh, broadcast. That's I was going very out excited widely. about that. Okay, a few things. Pod Save the World on Wednesday, who we got? We have former U.S. Ambassador to Russia, Michael McFaul. Uh, we talked a couple weeks back. We talked about the whole scope of the U.S. relationship with Russia, things Obama did, the record, the history, a little bit of the Trump stuff. But it's a broader look at the United States and Russia and the history there. And he ordered the wiretap on He ordered the wiretap. Correct. Correct. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Anna Marie Cox's new podcast with friends like these. It's crushing it. She had a great interview last week with Ira Madison about it was great. being it was... the black friend. <laughs> and about being the white friend. And about being the white friend. It's a great interview. Also, we're going to be on Funnier Dies live stream again tomorrow night, Tuesday night. We have special guest comedian Whitney Cummings. It's great. Good booking. Love it. Yeah. And as always, <laughs> guys, don't forget to download Square Cash, the newest, simplest way to pay people back. Sending and receiving money is totally free and fast, and most payments can be deposited directly to your bank account in just a few seconds. Link your debit or credit card, select an amount to send, type in a friend's phone number or email address to complete a payment. Boom. Instant cash. Right like, there. Like, let's say you bet Carter Page uh, that he wouldn't go on Anderson Cooper and make an absolute fool of himself. After he, ar- <laughs> after he already went on Chris Hayes. And, and made, made a fool, fool of himself. himself. <laughs> uh, you can send him 50 bucks using this app. <laughs> Uh, you can also use the app to donate to the International Rescue Committee via Square Cash. It helps refugees. They certainly need that help today after the new travel ban that we're about to talk about. Look at that. I segued out of it now into the topic. You're getting really good at this. I know. I didn't even plan that one. Congrats. Okay, so Congrats this, on your success. This morning, Trump signed the new... We're going to talk about a few things before we get into the big thing, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> which, is, which is the we wiretap being ordered by Barack Obama directly. get into directly. it. Um, okay, so this morning... Uh, with no cameras present, uh, Trump decided to sign uh, his new travel ban. No cameras present, and also uh, Spicy's not doing an on-camera briefing today either. So What a coward. Cowards. To your job. Uh, number one, the old ban is revoked, so the see you in court tweet is no longer operative. Also revoked. At least for now. The new travel ban takes effect on March 16th, so Trump's tweet about... He's like, we couldn't wait a week with the other ban because all the bad dudes would plan to come into the country. So, so it turned out... That the pundit reaction to Trump's speech on Tuesday was so good that it reduced the terror threat so that they could delay the EO week. Right. Exactly. That's right. That's and correct. And then it's diminished even greater still by his tweets about wiretaps that the EO doesn't need to go in effect for another two weeks. It's amazing how that happens. A few other quick tidbits on the new ban. Iraq is off the list. The literal home of ISIS. Home of ISIS. The safe haven for ISIS, no longer on the list. Apparently Mattis lobbied for that to be off the list. Uh, it will not affect green card holders or anyone with a visa. No refugees for 120 days. We will not accept any refugees from any country. And then here's, the, here's where it could get bad. The EO directs the Department of Homeland Security to set new standards for how much info other countries have to give the United States when their citizens apply to come here. If they don't meet that standard, whatever the standard may be, they get placed on a permanent blacklist for all immigration. So that's it. So that's the real, I think that's, yeah. the, that's the story here. Th- this is the story here. So on, on the last Pod Save the World, I talked to Heather Higginbottom, who's a Deputy Secretary of State, and who was really one of the people out front leading this effort to, to vet refugees. I mean, the time to plug your show is over, but continue. And one of the things <laughs> she said was there was not a database they didn't search through, right? Like, if, if you had told them, hey, uh, here's another place you can find more data, more data is over here, they would have they would have incorporated that and made it part of the vetting process. Meaning other countries. But it doesn't exist. Meaning any data you can find. Got it. Right? But what the problem here is you're asking uh, people coming in from, say, Syria to supply information about you know, where they lived, finances, whatever it may be, from a country that doesn't have any institutions left because they've been bombed out of existence. right? So this is, in a sense, a de facto ban if they're not able to get these data. That, that's my concern. And, and by the way, that's also part of the reason it's so difficult for Syrian refugees to already get legal status in the United States. Part of the problem is it's very hard to verify these people, and they do an incredibly stringent job in vetting them. Yes. These, people, are, these from... people cross oceans with literally nothing on their person, and there were asking a country that we're essentially, you know, not at war with, but bombing. <laughs> right. Yeah. A, a collapsing country like, hey, can you uh, give us this file? It's like, no, we can't. The Russians and ISIS bombed that building. Right. Those files don't exist. Right. The other development that took place between the bands was um, a report from Department of Homeland Security's uh, intelligence, own intelligence that said there is no national security reason to ban people from these seven countries. 
So makes sense. <laughs> so the president's own Department of Homeland Security doesn't have it find has not been able to find a national security reason, and that pro- that could matter when this case goes to court because ACLU, by the way, has said that they will still bring a lawsuit against this uh, executive order because they still believe that it is uh, unconstitutional. By the way, though, it's it is fascinating how. <laughs> how much this has been reduced, right? Like how hard they have lost this fight. Like first it was going to be held up in the court and they were going to fight in the courts. Now they've abandoned that. that now they've been restricted to this executive order, which is again going to be challenged in the courts. They're signing it behind closed doors because they're not proud of it. They delayed it because they knew it was a bad story. Like this is a, this went from a thing he campaigned on, a promise he was going to keep to a huge headache but, they don't know what to do with. And that's exactly, that's the right, the best point. All the logical Thanks. fallacies that John walked through with the top about, you know, their arguments they've made and why those have been sort of walked back lead you to ask, okay, so why are we doing this now? If the Homeland Security Department is like, eh, I'm not sure this will make us safe, um, seemingly it's only to keep a campaign promise that didn't make sense at the time because it was only done because it pulled well, right? Right. It's because Steve Bannon doesn't like Muslims. Well, Steve Bannon is not just opposed to immigration from these places. He's opposed to all immigration, period. And and and, and Miller and Bannon have given away the store on this, which is um, it, it's not national security just for them. They do not want immigration from Muslim countries because they do not believe those people can assimilate in this country. They believe that the reasons are economic. It's competition with our workers. It is all kinds of other reasons besides national security. And so this is still just an opening salvo and part of, by the way, the larger campaign they're waging to increase detention and, and yes. generally turn immigrants some, into a scapegoat. So some of this deportation stuff, too, I want to talk about. Um, there, there was a story that was floating around yesterday out of Chicago. Um Army Private First Class Miguel Perez was born in Mexico, grew up in Chicago. Uh, he now faces a deportation hearing today uh, because of a nonviolent uh, offense. Um, he's one of thousands of green card veterans facing deportation under Trump. This man served two tours in Afghanistan and was injured in an explosion. He has a uh, traumatic brain, in- brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. This is one of thousands of <laughs> veterans who have fought and fought for this country who are now facing deportation. These, these are the bad dudes yeah. that, that Trump wants to get out of the country. It's irrational. It's appalling. It's immoral. It's unethical. The lack of empathy involved in any of these rulings is, is hard to understand. Um, I, I just hope the public opinion could turn against this in some way. It just, it, well, it just makes, me, it makes me so angry going back to last week, too, and that fucking joint session speech the moment he became president the moment he be- yeah the- remember <laughs> but- the moment he became president guys Actually, so- he was president for a few weeks before when he started these disportation processes when he started repealing regulations when he started doing and he continues to be president in the days after he's right. been president the whole fucking time <laughs> <laughs> that was like, my favorite moment from your conversation with dan on thursday was when you were like presidential is a word we use to describe presidents it, it's relevant in the campaign but once you become president it's just what you it's, are by the way by the way it's it's barely relevant in the campaign the word it's hard to really pin down what anyone's talking about other than it reminds me of something I saw in a movie and it makes me feel good as a sort of wishy-washy pundit without perspective right like yes he also it's like hey guess what he lied to all the news anchors and everyone else that he that he talked to during that lunch before the joint session speech when he said he might soften his stance on immigration and everyone fucking bought it again like we buy every fucking possible pivot from donald trump and once again it was proved to be false because the man lies all the time (laughs) he's a liar he lies all the time john do you think Trump is sorry for lying to those anchors to the point where he might send them some flowers? Oh, well, if he does, if he does send them flowers, he should use pro flowers. Oh, that's a great idea. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a second. Okay, great. (laughs) Love pro pro flowers. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) We have always loved pro flowers, and we have always been at war with East Asia. I I wish this podcast was videotaped because if you guys if you saw Lovett's face when I just said that right. you would have lost it. Uh, um, do you guys know those people that are just hard to shop for? I do, like your girlfriend, like your girlfriend, your fiance, or your, or your, your podcast host, your podcast host. <laughs> it, it's very hard to shop for them. Well, we're going to make it easy for you. Pro flowers are fresh, they're priced right, they're the perfect gift for literally anyone, and they get delivered straight to the recipient's door. How easy is that? Right now, ProFlowers has a special offer just for our listeners. Get $10 off your first purchase of $29 or more. This deal works on best-selling gifts like their 100 Blooms Bouquet, a dozen roses, or even their totally unique plant gifts. You know, 
Emily watched Pundit, and you watched Pundit too. And apparently there was a snafu as to whether I technically had asked in advance. <laughs> and um, I was there. You kind of did. He did not ask. <laughs> you wait, oh, wait. Tommy verified that I asked. Well, you asked for one day, and then you extended it to like two three days. No, 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 no. But he, wait a second, Tommy. Anyway, Pro Flowers would be a great gift to use. <laughs> to <laughs> Were you keeping all deal, of this in? To snag this great deal, go to proflowers.com and enter code CROOKED at checkout. Pro Flowers is a no-brainer gift for birthday and anniversary every occasion, even when you watch your neighbor's dog, despite him not asking in advance. Tommy says I asked. Tommy so says right I now, asked. get $10 off your purchase of $29 or more Pro Flowers, but this deal definitely won't last long. Go to proflowers.com and enter code CROOKED at checkout to get the special deal. The code is CROOKED. Use it. We're in business here, people. Okay. This okay. isn't just for fun. Guys, um, <laughs> let's talk about what happened on Saturday. Uh, is it so, time to little, talk about what happened on I, Saturday? I want to paint. Uh, I want to get to motivation here. So let's paint a little bit of a backstory. Which um, okay, so Ashley Parker and some <laughs> others did an outstanding Washington Post story this morning about Bobby Costa and, and Robert Costa. Sorry, it's so, so glorious. Third, yeah, uh, about Trump's anger. So Trump is very upset and angry and furious. He can't make the Russia story disappear. He went ballistic when he found out that Sessions recused himself. He can't stop the leaks. He can't pass any legislation. And he also, this is very important, has really started to hate the unflattering comparisons to Obama's first couple months when Obama passed quite a bit of legislation. When Obama did stuff, when Trump Obama has been unable to do anything. Saved the global economy from fight, from collapse. When he when, when he became, you know, the car reactor was divided. And, into and three there's parts. amazing footage president. of Steve Bannon shouting and pointing through the window of the Oval Office that CNN captured or the pool captured. It's amazing. I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. It's great. Friday was not a great day in the White House. Tough day. <clears throat> so he wakes up Saturday. In a series of tweets sent at 6.30 a.m. on Saturday morning, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, accused his predecessor, Barack Obama, of wiretapping his phones during the election. He called him a bad, sick guy. He compared it to Watergate and McCarthyism. He then took a shot at Arnold Schwarzenegger for quitting The Apprentice and decided to play 18 holes of golf. Every, people have made this point, which is, when you've recently uncovered a Watergate inside your own White House, how long <laughs> should you be worried about that before you turn to Apprentice ratings? <laughs> <laughs> I like mean, it was like it was like a, it was. That's it was basically like fifteen, 15 minutes. minutes. That's right. So the question is, where did the outburst come from? Um, uh, it did not, it his did... father wasn't very nice to him, and <laughs> um, he also has a deep kind of well of kind of a hole in his heart he can't fill. John, um, I assume it was the no? the PDB, the President's Daily Brief, which was... where he gets the most sensitive intelligence in the world at any time based on his request. Now he's right? playing Angry Birds during that. Sadly, Tommy, that was not. <laughs> It was, it was not, not the PDB. The PDB. Okay. Was it a breaking news alert from a from a, any kind of uh, journalistic institution? It was not. Oh, the Times not of the New York, York Times? Was not it CNN? Any, was it any kind of investigative reporting that had just been unearthed? Uh, it was not. Apparently, huh. someone on his staff handed him a Breitbart story from Friday, which summarized a rant by right-wing radio talk show host Mark Levine, who said that the Obama administration and the intelligence agencies have been out to get for tr- Trump for a long time and are planning a coup. That is where this came from. Uh. Should have known. Should have guessed that. <laughs> so, Obama's office then puts out a statement denying that Obama or any White House official ever ordered surveillance on any U.S. citizen and said that it was the policy of the Obama administration and just about every administration in modern history to never interfere with any independent investigation conducted by the Federal Bureau of Investigation or the Department of Justice. Ben Rhodes, I thought, had a really great response to this, which he said, which he said on Twitter, which is, actually, uh, we have laws in place uh, to prevent this, specifically to stop people like you from spying on citizens. Are you talking about the same Ben Rhodes who uh, disguised well, himself as a cable guy and actually yeah, he installed a, the, the he bugs a, he in Trump a, Tower? He put on a mustache and a pair of overalls, black hat, <laughs> crawled under. Uh, he and uh, he and uh, Terry Zuplat of the White House speechwriting operation, two of them, hey, those duo. Carter Page, try my burner. <laughs> try my burner phone and see if this one works. So let's let's break this down. Tommy, how does surveillance actually work? Well, let's if how would this how would this happen if this was if this was true? Um, so some key points here because we're talking about the wiretapping allegedly of an American citizen. So right. one, the president cannot or legally order the wiretapping of an American citizen. Another important fact is Trump has no evidence to back up this claim except for the Breitbart article, which we know because his staff was unable to confirm it after the fact, right? We also know that Comey asked DOJ to declare the statement false, and Jim Clapper denied this. So just some facts to get those out of the way. That is a huge one, because we went through, again, we went through like a 48-hour period where there was all kinds of fucking conjecture. And like, look, I I knew that it came from the Breitbart article, but even after Obama's statement, that didn't mean that there was no surveillance because Obama just wouldn't know because he's not supposed to do that, right? Right. But then... 
we got confirmation last night that James Comey, the <laughs> the FBI, said that it's bullshit. And I feel like this is a bit like putting together like a complicated math proof. You're like, you need all these different people to rule it out and be very emphatic. Like, wait, did you not know about it? And would you know about it if it were true? Right. And they are so like, it is so rare to see an intelligence official on television being definitive. I and agree. Clapper was like, no, <laughs> I would know and no. We were talking about this on the way here. These stories were the worst stories to deal with at the White House when I was at the NSC spokesman because when you're dealing with intelligence matters, there's always shades of gray. There's always confusing exceptions. You're always trying to get to the bottom of something you can't really talk about. But you're right. A statement that definitive from Comey and Clapper is remarkable. But just a little a little background here. Um, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act was passed right after Watergate when Nixon was illegally surveilling political opponents and others. Uh, it created the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, where judges hear applications from DOJ or the FBI to collect intelligence information inside the United States. So basically, there are two lawful ways to target U.S. citizens for surveillance and collect the contents of their phone calls and emails. We're on, there's a criminal wiretap. And we've all seen the wire. That's where you go to a federal judge <clears throat> with evidence and say, this person committed a serious crime. I need to monitor their comms. The other is a national security wiretap, wiretap or FISA order, which requires a federal judge on the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court to believe that the person is an agent of a foreign power or, you know, it's seemingly there might be some there's an effort to collect a record relative to a foreign entity like a bank. And maybe that's what's causing the confusion here. So what? so no surveillance is approved by the executive branch. Obama it is only approved by the judicial branch. Correct. O- Obama can't say, let's surveil that guy. Right. Someone at DOJ goes to a judge. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, so no, it's not even like, oh, well, Obama's Justice Department did it. Obama's Justice Department can go to a judge and ask and say, we have substantial evidence to warrant surveillance. And then the judge would have to say yes. Right. So if, if, if a judge did approve surveillance, whether it was a FISA judge or an article or a regular judge, right, that would mean that there was substantial evidence of Trump or one of Trump's associates doing something doing bad. Doing something bad. Yes. Now... Where it gets a little confusing and where people are, I think, understandably confused, they're saying, well, what about General Flynn? We all know his conversation with the Russian ambassador was was picked up. That was, according to news reports, I don't have firsthand knowledge of this, because the NSA was monitoring the communications routinely of the Russian ambassador and Flynn's conversations were picked up in the process of that surveillance and were deemed relevant that his name was associated with. And there's a process for when Americans are captured in the routine spying on foreign nationals. Right. There are procedures called minimization, where you are essentially redacting or disguising the names of known U.S. citizens involved, and those names are only brought out if it's sort of relevant to the case or the intelligence itself. And once again, I just want to flag that we're not only more entertaining, but just much more informative than regular news. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put a pin love on it when it happens. Love it. Wait, 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 Trump's check. president. You can compliment so, yourselves. But there were... Okay, so... Trying to comb through, which is a, a, a bullshit process anyway, trying to comb through like the origins of the Breitbart story and the Mark Levine rant and stuff like that. Glenn Kessler of the Washington Post did a, a full fact check on this whole thing. Just to, and basically what it comes down to, he said only there's only one article in one story. I think it's the Heat Street Heat Street story, blog, right? Even that, whatever problems you may have with that, green were, assault. Let's right, say that was the only one that reported that there was a FISA court order, possibly to surveil a computer server, possibly in Philadelphia, or, or not even surveil to get records to related get records from, to right. their connections to a Russian bank. And this that we you don't know that it's claim not. has not been confirmed by a U.S. news organization, any, and no article. Nowhere, no story, nothing says that Obama requested the order or that it resulted in the tapping of Trump's phone lines. It is completely false. It's made up. Made up. It is a conspiracy theory. So I was saying this on the way over. Like, it is one thing to ex- you almost expect this from Donald Trump. Love it. You were, you brought this up, I think, yesterday. I don't know if it was on Twitter or what, but like, <laughs> there, this is no like, yeah, uh, yes, go this ahead. is. <laughs> Trump is not losing it. He's not deranged. He's not going crazy. He's not falling apart. He's exactly the same. He is just sur- he is he is the same person he was. He is doing what he does. He is taking in whatever that uh, salves his ego and tweeting about it online. What has changed is his surroundings, and he's the commander in chief of the United States. And he is surrounded by an apparatus in the government and conservative press and conservatives in Congress who now feel they need to carry his water. Yes. What 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 is concerning to me 
is that rather than go to the his for, national security advisor, the head of the CIA, anyone in the intelligence community to try to understand what actually happened, he is listening to extremist truffle pig slash chief strategist Steve <laughs> Bannon, who's rooting around in the NSC doing God knows what, and filling his head with crazy conspiracy theories about how the deep state is targeting him. The thing, that's, the thing that actually scares me, and a few people have pointed this out, that... <laughs> When we're in real trouble is when he actually figures out that he's president of the United States and has a lot of power and a lot of access and can find things out without tweeting about it first. Right. <laughs> but, but like one of the things that's driving me crazy about this whole conversation is like, is that logic and reason is just completely absent. So I just wanted to ask you guys a couple of rhetorical questions, sure. if you don't mind. Do you think Obama would end his presidency by illegally wiretapping a total buffoon that everyone thought was going to lose the election in a landslide. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. Doesn't sound like no, the Obama this, I know. This is, what, this is what I said yesterday. It's like, this was Obama's plan all along. It's like, I'm going to wiretap our political opposition. I'm going to gather the information. I will say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I will let him win, and then I will ride off into the sunset. <laughs> yeah, and then when I'm in that a, is the plan. Then when I'm paragliding, when I'll I'm, leak it. Once, yeah, once, right. once I'm safely, once safely at, on vacation with yeah. Richard Branson, that yeah. is the when time. I, when I'm 50 feet up above a speedboat, looking down at a beautiful vista, I'll click send. <laughs> also, also this whole bullshit, like Obama's Obama's Justice Department investigated his political opponent. Obama's Justice Department investigated Hillary Clinton. Right, Obama, yes. Obama's Justice what Department. are you fucking talking about? <laughs> right, like, like, yes, it is. It, 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 uh, <laughs> what? That is, because, because, oh, I can't. So I was so angry this weekend. I was so angry because here's why I'm angry. I'm not, Donald Trump, you expect this. This is where I started. Yeah. And so he is a loony person. He's a loony old man who has conspiracy theories. That's fine. But now when he issues a conspiracy theory, when he, when he has something like this, the, his White House backs him up. The fucking entire Republican Party, except for various members of Congress who, there are some Republicans yeah, in Congress who are some, like, ah, I haven't seen any of this yeah, evidence, right? Couple, so give them credit. A couple birthday candles in the dark. A couple birthday candles in the dark. But is that, then, a, like, is that the, an expression? They're just smaller than candles. I just uh, didn't want to. They're not real candles in the dark. But they're like birthday candles in the got dark. It, got it, got it. The entire conservative media establishment is backing him up now. And it's not just lunatics like Sean Hannity who were tweeting at all of us all weekend, what did Obama know and when did he know it? Ben Rhodes, have you gotten a lawyer? Valerie Jarrett, have you gotten a lawyer? Sean John Hannity Favreau, you're not talking idiot. back to me because a lawyer is coming up with your talking points? Like, you are such a fucking moron. Like, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> did you get those talking points? <laughs> I, I did get the talking points. <laughs> Can I ask you guys another rhetorical question? Given all that's leaked so far, do we think if Donald Trump himself was subject to wiretapping, illegal or not illegal, that it wouldn't have leaked out? I mean, the Washington Post has 17 sources on any given story. There was actually one leak that I actually wanted to talk about because it was about our friend Reince Priebus. And it was a leak about Priebus after a meeting in the Oval about leaks, trying to get people to deny leaks, which then leaked because it was about people <laughs> having a problem with the way things are being leaked. It was a <laughs> record. It was a record in that story. It was a leak about a leak about a leak about a leak. I mean, <laughs> part, part of what's so frustrating about this is after all the the you know preening about Hillary Clinton and the need to investigate her and all the wrongdoing, there's an underlying suggestion here that if the FBI spots criminal activity or collusion with a foreign government, that they should not investigate because it somehow was connected to Donald Trump and we were in the midst of a right! campaign. That right? was the other and thing. Literally putting politics before law enforcement or national security. Well, the, so I right after the Obama statement came out, um, there were a lot of reports. People just said Obama denied that there was any wiretapping whatsoever. So I tweeted like, <clears throat> I'd be careful reporting that because all that said is that Obama didn't order it or know about it because that's not his job. Right. You know, and all these f since then, every right winger and Fox News, everyone else has been retweeting my tweet. And they're like, Obama's former uh, former Obama administration official says that there could have been wiretapping like gotcha. Now, John did Favreau you, did not deny it. Now, did you and I'm know like, about first that all, from L.A.? Oh, <laughs> yeah. First of all, I don't know shit. I've been gone since 2013. <laughs> and when I was there, I wouldn't have known shit either. <laughs> also, by the way, let's all keep in mind. What is this all about? The fact that there were insane and unnecessary contacts over and over again between between Russian officials and the Trump campaign, which they denied and lied about for months. And they have been the most strangely pro-Russia administration we've had in decades. And that is the heart of this, which has not changed when Trump makes something up on Twitter on a fucking Saturday. It, goes, yes. it just goes down to this. Either Trump completely made it up and it's another conspiracy theory and he lied to the American people or... Um, there has been surveillance, and because there was surveillance, that means that there was sufficient evidence. Right now, <laughs> if there was surveillance, I just want to—I just want to step back for a second and help people understand how sensitive FISA 
uh, surveillance or mm. the the anything to do with American citizens is right. Like that is the most some of the most protected information that happens in government. It, it is shared uh, where relevant, but like. The fact that Trump's instinct is to learn about this and then just to immediately tweet about it is such a departure from any conversation about these issues we've had in the last 10 departure years. Departure from is, basic sanity. It, it, and is, the, it is stunning to me as a person path- who worked in this stuff. And the pathetic, despicable cleanup effort by Sean Spicer and his press minions over the weekends. Sean, buddy, you do not get a pass because you're a team player. I know Nicole Wallace said on the pod on Thursday that he's a nice guy. And you, we hear this all the time about Sean Spicer. He's such a nice guy. He's just doing an act. Sean, this is who you are now. You are the guy doing this. You're not the guy putting on a show. You will go down for your participation in this evil fucking administration. And you shouldn't pretend otherwise. It is very interesting to me that they are putting out uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders on shows. Their deputy press secretary. <clears throat> Let's just be clear. You put out the deputy sec- press secretary in the last six months of administration to get that person some reps so they can get a cooler job when it's all done. Okay, <laughs> that's not the, that's not your go to that's not <laughs> your go to player in like month two, right? <laughs> Building your Twitter. They, they, they she's so her good on TV. They're putting her out there because everyone who's senior does not want to be on the record. They saw what happened to Kellyanne Conway. They saw what happened to Sean. Uh, speaking of Kellyanne, everyone gets shattered. Uh, she's back. Out. Kellyanne is back. This morning she was on Fox and Friends and she's like, "Oh, well, the president said that because he has access to intelligence." That you don't going on Fox and Friends isn't a real interview though. I mean, but also you like, might as well just be so they, by your mom she, at like so an she, event. She changed. So the White House over the weekend confirmed that it was news reports that led to the president tweeting that. But Kelly and Conway this morning was like, "Oh, uh, just kidding. It was actually intelligence." Oh, really? Well, she's just a well, she's a liar. She's too. just a liar. Um, so the question is, what happens next? <laughs> um, the, the the White House is now calling for Congress to investigate the FBI's role in all this, which is also somewhat hilarious because basically the the executive branch is calling on Congress to investigate the executive branch. Right, right. That's <laughs> like... D- Donald Trump, basically, like, Donald Trump no, can find out all of this information himself. Right. Like, he doesn't need Congress to investigate himself. But if they do investigate per, and, and they do find that there was surveillance, perhaps they'll also uncover the evidence that led to the surveillance, which would be some kind of contacts that were uh, nefarious between Russians and the Trump. And Trump. Basically, there's not, there's nothing Congress could uncover from someone inside the executive branch that that whatever they tell Congress, they couldn't also tell the president. Yeah, is that I, true? I don't know. It, <laughs> I mean, I it's so ridiculous. It, right? It's so hard so, to figure so out. What's true and, you know, and then the way Trump's aides cheer him up is by taking him out to dinner to talk about banning Muslims and refugees from the country. Talk about that report. Because that, <laughs> no, in the in the Washington Post story, it was like he was he was so upset, he was in a rage, and then he was at Mar-a-Lago for dinner, and they're like, they laid out the plans for the travel ban. Yeah, they laid out the and travel ban. And that cheered band, him yeah. up. And then <laughs> I was happy. So then he woke up happy at the way he seemingly changed the narrative to being about attacking Obama for something he never did. And then he was upset again because surrogates on the Sunday shows didn't defend him because he's making it up and he's crazy. They were particularly mad at little Marco, who bummed a ride down to Florida on Air Force One and then didn't get his back I on actually, the Sunday I love this, obviously, because it's about our friend Marco Rubio, uh, uh, world-famous coward. And um, <laughs> so Marco Rubio gets a ride with Trump and he like walks behind Trump with his sad, tired face mm. because uh, <laughs> his insides are showing on his outsides. And, um, <laughs> and then he's asked about this and he just hems and haws and he has a talking point which I think he's very proud of which is I will participate in a witch hunt but I also won't participate in a cover up and that's why I'm not going to answer any of your questions and so he won't call for a special prosecutor he wants the intelligence committee to do its work but he wants to note that the intelligence committee is not a law enforcement body which is why they're not going to do blah 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 I'm not going to say anything I'm not going to criticize Trump but even that wasn't uh, defending Trump enough for Trump Marco, you can't win for losing. Just say what's on your mind. You can't stand Trump. You wish you weren't president. You don't believe him. You think he's a liar. You think he's crazy. You don't trust him. So I don't think that Marco Rubio is going to get another ride on Air Force One after that. <laughs> and so I think if in order for him to get from place to place, he might have to use Lyft. Oh, that's a good idea for Marco. Do you know about Lyft? I do. It's, it's the app, app that gets you a ride in minutes, on demand 24-7 for less than the cost of a cab. If you've tried Lyft, you know what I mean. With Lyft, you just download the app, request a driver, and they show up in three and a half minutes on average. Very fast. I took Lyft yesterday. Look at that. Every Lyft driver is fully vetted through their 10-point safety standard, including criminal and DMV background checks. You know you'll get around quickly and safely. Lyft drivers are rated after every ride, so only the best stick around. You don't have to worry about getting into a filthy car with some creepy dude. With Lyft, you can tip in the app, which obviously leads to happier drivers. 
Nine out of ten Lyft rides get a perfect five-star rating from the passenger. Like this podcast. It's just a better all-around experience. Bigger isn't always better, guys. Lyft isn't the biggest ride-sharing app, but it's the fastest-growing and highest-rated one. Thanks to Lyft, we've got an easy way to avoid drunk driving. You never have to bum a ride. You never have to worry about parking. Right now, Lyft is offering our listeners a special deal. Get three free rides, up Whoa. to $10 each. That's up to a $30 value when you enter promo code Crooked Media. That's a different promo code, Crooked Media. I'm very Just excited about the this free Lyft, Lyft sponsorship, app. Mm-hmm. but we're going to talk to them about this promo code. But it's fine. Crooked Media. <laughs> Just download the One free Lyft app today and enter promo code Crooked Media in the payment section. You'll start with three free rides up to $10 each. That's up to a $30 value. That's promo code Crooked Media. So, like, let's say Sean Spicer <clears throat> is weeping at his desk and he just wants to go. Call Lyft and just say, drive, man. Just drive. <laughs> drive, drive to We See Water. So, I do. I mean, <clears throat> I started making the point about how it's not just Trump that's a problem. It's the White House's response to this. But, like, I will not be surprised in a couple weeks from now if 40% of Americans believe that Barack Obama had Donald Trump wiretapped. And that's not just because 40% of Americans hang on every word Donald Trump says. There is an entire conservative media establishment from lunatics like Breitbart and Mark Levine right. to. You know, even even places like the National Review yesterday was doing the whole, oh, well, Obama's Obama's Justice Department has been, you know, digging around in Trump and they have it out to get him, even though they also investigated Hillary Clinton. But no, 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 it's politically motivated and the deep state hates them and they're mm-hmm. leaking and blah, blah, blah. And so he, he, Trump, the, the, the line's going to be Trump may not have been exactly right, but he did have a point that Obama administration holdovers are out to get Trump. And and by the way, and like you don't even need to get deep into the conservative media. You can check out the kind of the pundits who are going to make it really hard. Look, this is a hard issue to understand. We have we spent just like half an hour trying to get through it and it is tough. Like I don't feel like I have like I don't think I could go through recount what we just went through and sort of say in a simple way. Like this is a complicated story and people are frustrated and they don't trust what they're getting and so like no one knows. No one can follow the news. But it is impossible and, to keep up with what's happening. And Trump has paid no cost for his previous lives. The size of his inauguration, the claim that 3 million plus people voted illegally, that Ted Cruz's dad killed JFK, <laughs> that Obama was a founder of ISIS. Like there's been no that Obama wasn't paid. born in America. You know this is What's what's scary now is credibility really matters for a president, right? You, you, we, he will go to a country at some point. There was an unbelievable story about North Korea's nuclear yeah. program in the New York Times over the weekend. Terrifying stuff. That is one of the great challenges he faces as president. Apparently, I don't know this, but apparently, reportedly, Obama told him this is one of the things he briefed him on in their 90-minute meeting in the Oval. Like, that's where you bring up your top, top priorities. He's not focused on these things. Meeting not, seems so long ago. He has no credibility to go to the United Nations and say... This is what I know about their nuclear program. That, well, this is what I know point. about their ICBM program. Our, our president, who has been a proven liar now, has no credibility in the eyes of with the anybody. World. With, with anybody. Um, so, as we always try to do here, what can we do? What's one thing we can do? So, Sessions recused himself from any um, any role in this investigation between Rush, in Russia and Russian interference and possible collusion with the Trump campaign. Um, so that it goes to the deputy attorney general, right? Currently, the deputy acting attorney general is an Obama administration hold, holdover. Um, there is a confirmation hearing this week for Trump's pick for deputy attorney general. Some re- the Democrats have said that they will try to use every tool possible. I saw uh, Blumenthal. Richard Blumenthal say this. Um, Good for him. Senator from Connecticut. Um, I believe to- former attorney general of Connecticut. Is yeah. that right? Don't pop quiz me. <laughs> I think that's right. Yeah. Good for you. Um he said that he'll use every tool in his disposal to hold up this confirmation hearing until the Trump administration agrees to appoint a special prosecutor to go through this. There's also a CNN poll this morning that said two thirds of Americans, including 43 percent of Republicans, believe that it should not be Congress that does all this investigation, but a special prosecutor. We can talk to Representative Schiff about this when, when he comes on. But I think that's one thing to demand that like we get. A, I mean. It, it, like you said, I love it. All this is confusing. It's hard to sort through, and it's hard to trust a lot of different people, a lot of different actors in this. You appoint an independent prosecutor, and you let them take care of all this. So I've seen like conflicting reports about whether the current deputy can appoint a special prosecutor right now from inside the Justice Department because right. Sessions has recused himself. And I wonder if that's not something... Have you guys seen that? Do you have any thoughts about that, of whether we should be pressuring the current deputy, who is an Obama appointee, but by all counts, a kind of bipartisan straight shooter respected on both sides, um, whether or not we could ask that, whether we should be pressuring that person to appoint the special prosecutor now, be given that whoever comes next, it's a lot easier to not appoint one than it is to fire one. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, I, I would just if they say... they can do it, they should. I, I would just say... <laughs> I don't know why we're not talking about it. 
the decision to name a special prosecutor is not something I think anyone takes lightly. It, it's a big deal. Those investigations tend to creep into not just the, the crime itself, but the cover-up. But I think it, it's hard to argue in any rational way that the administration, by by their botched response to this, and the number of times they've been proven to be lying or dishonest or misleading or shading the facts, haven't earned that. Right. And the, the other thing, too, is... <laughs> We also like this is really important. So when some people are like this is not a distraction from healthcare. This is not a distraction from deregulation. This is really important. But they're writing that healthcare bill behind closed doors right now. And I was and there's actually something interesting that's happening, which is Paul Ryan is really afraid they're going to run out of time specifically because uh, that if they don't get this bill out of the house fast enough, their members will go home for a two week recess and April, get April April eighteenth and get accosted about it. Resistance recess. It so, was recess again. April 18th, also the day of the special election in the Georgia 6th. And that big tax rally is coming up, too, right? Isn't there a huge rally on tax day? I think so. Release your taxes, Donald Trump. We got, we got lots of stuff. Oh, okay. Remember that? That feels like a, that feels like a, a distant memory. Oh, that, that's another one, the by the way. Keys to the kingdom, though. If President Obama wanted to screw over Donald Trump, he could have released his tax returns because President Obama had the power to get anyone's tax returns. Which, by the way, we should not talk about because Trump will find out. Right. <laughs> He's not... Well, it would have to appear in a Breitbart story. Okay. <laughs> When we come back, we will have the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Representative Adam Schiff. This is Pod Save America. Stick around. There's more great show coming your way. Pod Save America is brought to you by Helix. You're unique. You don't walk like everyone else, talk like everyone else, or sleep like everyone else. Because you're a spokesman for Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> so why is your mattress one size fits all? A truly customized mattress will cost you five to 10000 bucks. Until now, go to helixsleep.com, answer a few simple questions, and they will run a 3D biomechanical model of your body through the proprietary algorithms they developed with the help of the world's leading ergonomics and biomechanics experts. Do you know how many times I had to practice that sentence? A lot. I have to say you did great. You I'm picturing like a laser beam moving up and down a person. <laughs> it's Steve Bannon in my mind. That's weird. <laughs> the, uh, the results, the most comfortable mattress you've ever slept on. Helix customers report a 30% improvement in overall sleep quality, and for couples, they customize each side of the mattress. Oh, isn't that a relief? Uh, your mattress arrives at your door in about a week, and shipping is completely free. That's why everyone from GQ Magazine to Forbes are all talking about Helix Sleep. So, you have 100 nights to try out this free mattress, and if you don't love it, they will pick it up for free and give you a full refund, no questions asked. There's think, no risk here, guys. Think about how much happens in 100 days at the Trump administration. Just give the mattress pack if you don't like it. It's fine. Go to helixsleep.com slash crooked and get $50 off your order. That's helixsleep.com slash crooked. HelixSleep.com slash crooked. And Pod Save America is brought to you by Squarespace. If you've ever tried to start your own website, you know what a hassle that can be, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Make your next move, make your next website with Squarespace. Create a beautiful website with Squarespace's all in one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Squarespace provides award winning 24 7 customer support and will help you get your own custom domain with an experience that's fully transparent and simple to set up. Make your next move, lock down your domain, and create a website to launch that idea. Use offer code CROOKED for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's CROOKED for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with Squarespace. With us on the pod today, we have the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Representative Adam Schiff. Representative Schiff, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's great to be with you. Uh, it's great to have you here. Also, you you represent the three co-hosts today. We're I, in your district. I don't want to hijack this interview, but it's been windy, and a tree did fall on my block, <laughs> and I don't know if you can get me the right people to get that removed. Whatever, we I talk about it after. I right on that the moment we get off the line. <laughs> <laughs> so, lots to talk about from this weekend, but I want to start with the investigation into Russian interference and potential contacts between Russian officials and Trump campaign officials. So, you said last week that FBI Director Comey refused to answer questions from some members of your committee that were germ- that you believe were germane to the investigation. What's, what's your plan to get those answers? You know, or how concerned are you about this? Well, I'm very concerned about it. Uh, there are a couple kinds of briefings we get from the director. Uh, one is a quarterly counterintelligence briefing. Uh, and the other are the briefings that we're getting in connection with our investigation of uh, Russian interference in our election and the possibility of Russian collusion with uh, the Trump campaign. Uh, and we haven't gotten the information that we need to do our jobs. Uh, we had a number of members, myself included, ask the director questions that were pertinent to our investigation. Uh, and it's not that we didn't like the answers. It's just that the answer was, I'm not going to answer that question. 
Uh, ultimately, that can't persist if we're going to do our job. And I would hope that he will go back to the department, uh, come back to the committee or come back to the Gang of Eight with a different answer, uh, or we'll have to inform the American people that we can't do this investigation as we should, uh, and we'll have to uh, subpoena the director or uh, anyone else that we need to get information from. But I hope that kind of step won't be necessary. Well, so on, fr- on Friday night, uh, Senator Chris Coons from Delaware mentioned that the FBI has transcripts that would provide helpful insights into whether or not Russian officials were cooperating or colluding with the Trump campaign at the highest levels. Do you believe those transcripts exist, and, and how do you get them? Well, I can't comment on any of the specifics uh, about uh, what transcripts or conversations or uh, that that may or may not exist between we won't tell Russian officials or even between Russians talking to other Russians. That's not something I can go into. Uh, but I can say that uh, this is all, I think, very pertinent to our investigation. Uh, we ought to be doing this uh, thoroughly and follow the evidence wherever it leads. Uh, and certainly we would want to look at any intercepts if they exist and to the degree they shed any light on these issues. Uh, Congressman, if you look at the New Yorker today, there's a big story about a Trump hotel in Azerbaijan that's tied to a corrupt political family with ties to the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. There's a debate whether this might be a violation of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. And So my question is, you read things like that, and then you think logically about Russia. And it seems unlikely that Trump was cutting deals with Putin directly, and far more likely that he was doing business with his associates or some corrupt oligarch. And I guess my question is, can the congressional investigation encompass his real estate empire and what they're doing overseas with Russian oligarchs or businessmen that might be tied to Putin? I certainly think that the president's financial interests could be within the scope of our jurisdiction if uh, it's one of the ways that the Russians were exerting influence over Trump or his associates. And, of course, that was one of the allegations in that dossier that that uh, allegedly former British uh, spy uh, compiled that suggested that the Russians have been working for years to essentially get their tentacles around Donald Trump. Uh, interestingly, uh, in the president's tweets on the subject, to the degree you can rely on anything like that, uh, he doesn't talk about Russians' investment in him, only his investment in Russia. Uh, but the real committee that ought to be looking at this uh, is the one chaired by Jason Chaffetz, uh, and that is government reform. And uh, it's quite clear for Mr. Chaffetz he has a, uh, a new and quite different view of his investigative responsibilities in this administration than he had with the last. It seems as though he's a blubbering coward. <laughs> <laughs> if, I don't know. That's not that's my characterization. I know you couldn't agree well, with that. Well, you know, you, you can almost feel sympathy for him uh, when he had to appear this morning to defend Donald Trump's uh, spurious claims that President Obama had bugged his phones at Trump Tower. Uh, it was even difficult for him to, uh, I guess, toe the Trump line with much of a straight face. Especially when you know that Trump is watching. Yes, that is true. So uh, your counterpart on the Intel Committee, uh, Representative Devin Nunez, said that... Um, He's seen no evidence of improper communications between Trump and Russia, and he's been told by senior intel folks that, quote, there's nothing there. Do you agree with this characterization? Do you think that was appropriate? I don't agree with the characterization, and it's far too early, in my view, to draw any conclusion about what the evidence will show in terms of potential Russian collusion uh, with the Trump campaign. Uh, We just don't know yet. Uh, The first witness we had was the director, and the director refused to answer a lot of our questions uh, we are still in the process of looking at some of the documents, uh, and the documents we're examining right now are the documents that underlie the public report the intelligence community put out about the Russian hacking and dumping and Russian media campaign. So those documents uh, don't as yet even go to this basket of issues surrounding potential collusion. So it's way too early to be reaching any conclusions, and I don't think uh, any of the members of our committee uh, or the Senate committee ought to be speculating about what our ultimate conclusion will be. So this is obviously an incredibly complicated and vast story. A lot of the information is classified. It's really hard for people who have access to classified information to keep up with what's going on, let alone the vast, vast majority of us who don't. I think people are really scared and they're worried, right, that their president is compromised, that he can't be trusted, that there's been this collusion, that it's affecting our government right now. And I know that this investigation would take time and that you don't have all the answers. But what do you say to them right now that say, like, they're worried? They're worried that they can't trust this president with classified information. There are all these sort of harrowing reports about him not having access to information. How do you reassure people or do you not reassure people? Well, I'm not sure that I can reassure people. And there there are two things uh, that I would, would mention. The first is 
with respect to the president that when he tweets out these completely baseless and wild allegations against his predecessor, uh, it diminishes us in the the eyes of the rest of the world, the suggestion that by one president that he was bugged by the prior president. Uh, and, of course, people have quite rightly pointed out that would have to mean that a federal judge found probable cause to believe that Trump or his aides were engaged in crime or that a FISA court found that Trump and his aides were agents of a foreign power. The only other explanations, of course, for his statements are he's trying to distract or perhaps even the most disturbing conclusion would be he simply can't tell uh, fact from fiction. Uh, and from a presidential and constitutional perspective, he doesn't know right from wrong. And that would be the most uh, damning conclusion of all. Uh, the other thing I would mention is that, that people really need to keep the broader context in mind. And the broader context uh, is this. We're in a, a global war of ideas with Russia. It's uh, now not communism versus capitalism, but authoritarianism versus democracy. Uh, and the autocrats are on the rise, and we need to stand up and meet this challenge. Uh, and I think there's a profound concern around the world and now at home that we don't have a president who's up to that challenge. Do you believe Donald Trump can be cla- can be trusted with classified information? Well, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to, to know what he can be trusted with when he is willing to say something as incendiary uh, as he just did about his former the former president. Uh, I would hope that we could trust him not to blurt out information. I would certainly hope we could trust him that in any discussions that he authorizes his staff to have with the Russians that uh, he would never betray any sources of information. I think our intelligence agencies are going to be very protective of their sources, probably more protective than ever uh, when they involve Russia, uh, because there are profound concerns about where this president is coming from. Congressman, when you talk to colleagues on the House floor or or wherever you talk to them, do you think that Republicans will be able to find the courage to stand up to Donald Trump when his approval rating is higher than Bush or Reagan's would at this point in time? I mean, is is politics trumping national security and common sense here? Well, absolutely. Uh, And I think for a lot of the GOP members, you know, they know that the president is a loose cannon. They know the wheels are likely to come off the wagon. But right now, there's still things they want from this president, and they don't want to jeopardize them. So every week on the House floor, we take up a new giveaway to some Republican member. And if they're from a mining district, maybe it repeals the surface mining regulations. If they're from a grazing district, it repeals the grazing regulations. They all want to get something before the wheels come off the wagon. Uh, And a lot of these members, too, are worried about the Trump backers at home in their district. They they recognize that what the president said during the campaign proved all too true, that those who crossed him would pay a price with his supporters. Uh, and there are only a few, like uh, John McCain, that have had the spine to stand up to this guy. Congressman, how concerned are you about the volume and sensitivity of the leaks that are coming out about Donald Trump, about FISA, about our intelligence community generally? Well, I didn't like it when there were numerous leaks during the Clinton investigation. I don't uh, approve of leaks now. But I think uh, people need to distinguish between a couple different kinds of leaks. Uh, There are the leaks that really damage national security, where they're revealing of sources and methods of information. And we've certainly had some of those in the past. But a lot of the leaks we're talking about now are leaks that are merely embarrassing to the president or that reveal some kind of wrongdoing by the president. And, of course, the best example was the leak that revealed that Mike Flynn uh, had conversations with the Russian ambassador and lied about it. Uh, And what's so interesting about that and disturbing about that is when the president learned that Mike Flynn had lied uh, and caused the vice president to mislead the whole country, he was okay with that. Uh, For weeks, he did nothing. And the only thing that forced him to fire Flynn was when it became public. And I think this is why he's so mad at the press because he didn't want to fire Flynn, because lying to the country is okay in his book. And the real sin was getting caught and having it publicly exposed. Uh, And that's, I think, a big part of the reason why he views the press as the enemy, not of the people, but of his own personal enemy. So one possible explanation for the many, many contacts between that have been revealed between Trump campaign officials and Russian officials 
could be collusion, some kind of collusion with regard to the Russian interference in our election. What are the other possible explanations for all of these contacts? This is what I've been trying to figure out. Like, I don't know what the most innocent explanation is, but we, we know the contacts have existed and existed in a, a large volume during the campaign, not just in the transition like, period. Maybe they're planning a surprise party that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but but what else? What else? What else are you guys looking into on the committee in terms of these contacts? Well, you know, I, I think the explanations for. Uh, not only the contacts, but the Russians' uh, seemingly inexplicable affinity for Putin and his inability to criticize him in any way. You know, they range from the very benign, or uh, maybe not very benign, but from the benign to the far less than benign. And probably the most benign explanation is he he truly thinks he can have some kind of a different relationship uh, with the Russians and with Putin. A somewhat less benign explanation is that uh, he realizes he can't, but after having place so much of his credibility on the line with this new policy. There's nothing now the Russians can't do that he would call them on. Uh, and, of course, the even less benign explanations involve uh, there being some form of collusion and probably the least benign that the Russians have something on this president that he is desperately afraid they might reveal. Uh, and I would hope that our investigation, if it's truly objective, will uh, not prejudge which of those explanations is true, but do our best to find out and lay those facts before the American people. Do, do you think we need an independent prosecutor at some point? I do, and I, you know, I didn't reach that conclusion right away. But when some of the facts reach the point, and I think uh, vis-a-vis Flynn is a good example, where the Justice Department needs to make a decision, uh, is there a prosecutable offense here? Uh, the Attorney General, uh, I don't think, can do that. And the partial nature of his recusal, means that uh, since the Flynn conversations with the ambassador took place after the campaign, presumably Sessions would be making that decision. Now, I I don't think he should, uh, and I don't think people have any confidence in that judgment if it's his judgment. So I do think we are already at the point where we uh, ought to have an independent prosecutor. Representative Schiff, uh, we appreciate you uh, stopping by and uh, answering our questions, and and best of luck uh, on the continued investigation. Well, thanks a lot. You, you all do a great job, and uh, I just want to commend you on your work. Thank well, you thanks. so much, and you too. We'll have, you, we'll have to have you back on in lighter times. <laughs> Please, it would be nice to talk about something yeah. light for a change. Yeah, what for a slog. Sure. Yeah, like, <laughs> like North Korea nuclear weapons or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> Take care, Representative. Thanks. That's all we have for today. Thank you to Congressman Schiff for uh, coming on the pod, and uh, we'll see you again. Just, uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Love it. You have anything? You have like, closing okay. parting shot. Love I it? just think we should just take a second and just recognize that this is fucking crazy, <laughs> and we are still in the middle of something crazy. Somehow it manages to get worse because maybe we're just not imaginative enough. Do you think uh, it's a national crisis? Have yeah, you ever... yeah, we're in a national crisis, Tommy. I'll say it on Twitter and I'll say it again here. All right, okay. this is a crisis. Fortunately, we're going to get through it together here on Pod Save America. One pod at a time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.